one minute ago, a volcano that slept for 10,000 years exploded without a single warning sign. No quakes, no gas alerts, nothing. Haley Gooby, silent for a millennium, erupted into a 15-kilometer ash column that shocked scientists worldwide. If a dead volcano can wake up like this, what other giants are about to surprise us? The eruption column punched through the morning sky around 8.30 UTC on November 23, 2025. Satellite imagery from Planet Labs captured the moment within minutes of onset. Within seconds, a dark mushroom cloud expanded outward from a vent no one had monitored. The Toulouse Volcanic Ash Advisory Center issued its first red aviation alert at 1455 UTC. Ash reached flight level 450, approximately 45,000 feet, high enough to threaten transcontinental routes. The column drifted northeast at 25 kilometers per hour, carried by upper-level winds toward the Arabian Peninsula. Professor Simon Karn from Michigan Technological University confirmed massive sulfur dioxide emissions visible from space. The plume stretched hundreds of kilometers. Satellite sensors detected thermal signatures indicating fresh magma breaking the surface for the first time in recorded human history. But this was only the first warning. The eruption lasted several hours before subsiding. By late afternoon, UTC, explosive activity had stopped, though thermal anomalies remained visible from space. Fumarolic emissions continued into the evening. Haley Gooby rises 493 meters above sea level in Ethiopia's northeastern desert. It is the southmost peak in the Erta Ale Range, a chain of volcanic highlands shaped by one of Earth's most violent geological processes. The volcano itself is a shield structure, built from countless layers of ancient basaltic lava. Until yesterday, Haley Gooby had no known eruptions throughout the entire Holocene epoch. The Holocene began 11,700 years ago, marking the end of the last ice age. Every volcanic database showed the same conclusion. No historical activity, no fumarolic fields, no seismic swarms. Geological records from the Smithsonian Global Volcanism Program listed Haley Gooby as potentially active but unconfirmed. Remote sensing surveys detected no heat anomalies. Ground expeditions were rare because the Donakil Depression is one of Earth's most hostile environments. What came next shocked even the scientists. Temperatures in the Afar region routinely exceed 50 degrees Celsius. The landscape is a brutal expanse of black basalt, salt flats, and volcanic rubble. Few people live here. The Afar nomads who traverse this wasteland rely on ancient routes between water sources. For 10,000 years, Haley Gooby sat quiet. Its slopes cooled. Erosion softened its flanks. Vegetation, sparse as it was, crept toward the summit. The volcano became part of the background, undistinguishable from dozens of other peaks scattered across the rift. But beneath the surface, pressure was building. The Afar Triangle is where three tectonic plates meet. The African plate, the Arabian plate, and the Somali plate are all pulling apart. This is a triple junction, one of the most geologically active zones on the planet. The Gulf of Aden opened when the Arabian plate began separating from Africa approximately 35 million years ago. The Red Sea Rift followed at 23 million years ago. The main Ethiopian rift, the youngest of the three arms, started rifting 11 million years ago. According to research published in Nature Geoscience, the Afar region is underlain by a mantle upwelling. Hot asthenosphere rises from deep within the earth, weakening the lithosphere above. Where the crust is thinner or moving faster, magma pulses upward more frequently, and the signs were already spreading. The plates are diverging at different rates. The Arabian plate moves away from Africa roughly 25 millimeters per year. The Nubian and Somali plates separate at 6 to 7 millimeters annually. These movements seem slow, but over geologic time, they tear continents apart. 
the Afar depression has already sunk more than 100 meters below sea level in places. The landscape is scarred by fault mines, fissures, and grobbins. Volcanic activity concentrates along these zones of weakness. Erta Ale, approximately 15 kilometers to the northwest, has hosted a permanent lava lake since at least 1967, possibly since 1906. Erta Ale is Ethiopia's most active volcano. It is a basaltic shield rising to 613 meters elevation, though much of its base sits in terrain below sea level. The summit contains two pit craters, each with molten lava churning in near-constant convection. Tourists brave the brutal heat to witness the glow of Earth's mantle exposed. But the ground had one more secret. The awakening of Haley Gubby raises questions about the magmatic system beneath the Erta LA range. The two volcanoes share the same rift segment, suggesting they could be connected by deeper plumbing. Geophysical surveys have detected magma reservoirs beneath the range, but their exact extent and interconnections remain uncertain. A 2025 study in Nature found that mantle upwelling beneath AFAR is asymmetric and chemically heterogeneous. It feeds all three rift arms, but the composition and volume of melt vary. The eastern branch, which includes the Erta LA range, is characterized by high volcanic activity and frequent effusive eruptions. What triggered Haley Gubby's eruption remains unclear. No significant earthquake swarm was recorded. No ground deformation preceded the blast. The volcano simply exploded. This pattern aligns with findings from a 2024 study in Communications, Earth, and Environment. Researchers showed that rift volcanism can be controlled by shallow processes, including the fracturing of cap rock and the rapid ascent of gas-rich magma. When pressure exceeds the strength of overlying rock, eruptions can occur with little surface warning. What came next shocked even the scientists. The ash plume drifted east over the Red Sea by midday. Aviation authorities in Yemen and Oman issued flight advisories. Lower-level ash spread northwest toward Djibouti. Upper-level material continued northeast, potentially affecting air routes over Iran, Pakistan, and western India. The Toulouse VAAC reported that ash concentrations reached 3,000 meters altitude in some areas. Pilots were warned to avoid the affected airspace. No commercial flights reported encounters, but the threat remained for hours. Sulfur dioxide emissions were substantial. Professor Karn's satellite analysis revealed a significant plume visible from space, indicating the release of volcanic gases on a scale rarely seen in this region. This gas reacts with atmospheric moisture to form sulfate aerosols, which can cool regional climates if the eruption persists. And the signs were already spreading. By evening, the eruption had stopped. Thermal anomalies at the vent decreased. Satellite sensors no longer detected fresh lava emissions. But fumaroles continued to release steam and volcanic gases. For the Afar people who call this harsh landscape home, the eruption carries meaning beyond geology. Guides who lead visitors to Erta LA understand these volcanoes intimately, reading their moods through decades of observation. In villages scattered across the depression, the sudden appearance of ash from an unfamiliar direction would have sparked concern. The eruption unfolded in one Earth's most remote corners. No roads lead to Haley Gubby. No permanent settlements occupy its flanks. The nearest inhabited areas lie hours away by foot across razor-sharp lava fields, where daytime heat makes travel nearly impossible. The Afar nomads have traversed this rift for millennia, their knowledge of the land's temperament runs deeper than any monitoring network. When a volcano silent for 10,000 years suddenly speaks, the message resonates through communities who understand that the Earth year is never truly at rest. But this was only the first warning. Volcanologists are working to analyze the eruption's characteristics. The explosive nature of the blast presents a puzzle. Shield volcanoes like Haley Gubby typically produce effusive eruptions, where lava flows relatively gently. Explosive eruptions require different conditions. 
The presence of substantial ash indicates that magma encountered groundwater or that gas pressure built rapidly in a sealed conduit. Both scenarios point toward a shallow magma chamber, likely only a few kilometers beneath the surface. Understanding which mechanism dominated will require ground-based measurements that may take months to collect in such a remote location. What came next shocked even the scientists. The eruption highlights a sobering reality about global volcano monitoring. Many remote volcanic systems lack permanent seismic networks. Haley Gubby had no dedicated sensors. Its awakening was only detected because satellites happened to pass overhead at the right moment. The magma feeding Haley Gubby likely rose from depths of 10 to 30 kilometers based on patterns observed at similar shield volcanoes. As magma ascends, decreasing pressure allows dissolved gases to exsolve, forming bubbles. If the rising magma encountered a fractured zone or water-bearing rock, the rapid expansion of steam and volcanic gases could explain the explosive character of the eruption. Geodynamic modeling of the Afar region suggests that rifting here is driven by both plate tectonics and thermal buoyancy from the underlying mantle plume. The interplay between these forces creates pulses of magmatic activity. Where the lithosphere is thinnest, magma can breach the surface with limited warning signals detectable at the surface. And the signs were already spreading. Studies of rift volcanism have shown that eruptions can sometimes occur without extensive precursory earthquake swarms. In 2005, a 60-kilometer fissure opened in the Afar region over just a few days. The Dabahu Rift event, documented in peer-reviewed research, displaced millions of cubic meters of magma, but provided only brief seismic warning. If Haley Gubby's magma ascent followed a similar rapid pattern, then conventional monitoring might have struggled to detect the buildup even with instruments in place. This possibility challenges long-standing assumptions about volcanic forecasting in rift environments. The Afar Rift is also a natural laboratory for understanding how continents break apart. The processes occurring here today are analogous to the early stages of the Atlantic Ocean's formation. Millions of years from now, the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden will widen into ocean basins. The Afar Depression will flood with seawater. Eastern Africa will become a separate landmass. But the ground had one more secret. Whether Haley Gubby's eruption is an isolated event or signals broader changes along the Erda LA range remains an open question. Volcanoes in rift zones can erupt in clusters when magma intrusions redistribute stress. The geological record shows that activity at one vent can sometimes be followed by eruptions at neighboring sites. The 2008 eruption of Alu de Lilfa at the northern end of the Erda LA range was the largest recorded eruption in Ethiopian history. It produced extensive lava flows and demonstrably altered the regional stress field. Whether such events can prime other volcanoes for future activity is a subject of ongoing research. Haley Gubby's 10,000 year silence has now over. Whether this eruption is the beginning of a new cycle or a singular anomaly remains unknown. Scientists now face a cascade of questions. How much magma remains beneath Haile Gubi? Will the eruption resume? Are there other silent volcanoes in the Afar Rift that could awaken? The answer to each question is the same. We do not know. The monitoring network is insufficient. The geology is poorly mapped. The magmatic system is more complex than models predicted. Research on the Afar Rift has shown that rifting is not a smooth process. It occurs in pulses, sometimes separated by decades or centuries. Each pulse brings new intrusions, new faults, and new eruptions. Based on patterns of activity, the Afar region appears to be experiencing one of these active phases. And the signs were already spreading. The eruption of Haile Gubi also underscores the vulnerability of aviation. Volcanic ash is abrasive and can damage jet engines. Even dilute ash clouds pose risks at high altitudes. The eruption's plume drifted over international flight corridors. 
if activity resumes, airlines will face difficult decisions about rerouting. Climate scientists will watch the sulfur dioxide plume. If it reaches the stratosphere and persists, it could scatter sunlight and cause temporary regional cooling. The 1991 eruption of Mount Penitobo in the Philippines lowered global temperatures by 0.5 degrees Celsius for two years. Haile Gubi's eruption is smaller, but any cooling effect could influence weather patterns across East Africa and the Arabian Peninsula. But this was only the first warning. The Afar Depression is also home to humanity's earliest ancestors. Fossils of Australopithecus and Homo species have been found in sediments deposited between volcanic eruptions. The region's volcanic activity shaped human evolution by creating diverse habitats and migration corridors. Today, the same forces that built those ancient landscapes continue to reshape the Earth. Haile Gubi's eruption is a reminder that the planet beneath our feet is restless, unpredictable, and powerful. For now, the volcano is quiet. Satellite images show residual heat at the vent. Steam rises from fractures. Ash blankets the surrounding desert. The eruption has stopped, but what lies beneath remains unknown. What triggered the eruption after 10,000 years of silence? Was it a slow accumulation of magma, finally reaching a critical threshold? Or did a deeper pulse of heat from the mantle plume suddenly destabilize an already stressed system? The available data cannot yet distinguish between these possibilities. And the signs were already spreading. Scientists know that Haile Gubi erupted. They know the plume reached somewhere between 10 and 15 kilometers altitude. They know sulfur dioxide was released. But they do not know what comes next. Will the magma chamber refill? Will another vent open along the Erda Ailey range? Could this be the first eruption in a decades-long sequence? The answers lie kilometers beneath the Dandekil the Crescion, in a realm of molten rock and crushing pressure, a place where tectonic plates are being torn apart, where new ocean crust is forming, where the Earth is rewriting itself. But the ground had one more secret. The most unsettling aspect of Haile Gubi's eruption is not what happened, but what was missed. No precursors. No warnings. A volcano dormant for 10 millennia simply exploded. If Haile Gubi can awaken without warning, so can others. The Afar Rift contains dozens of volcanic centers with similar histories. Many have no monitoring equipment. Some have never been studied. Each one is a potential threat. Each one could be pressurizing right now, building toward an eruption that will catch the world by surprise. What came next shocked even the scientists. The Smithsonian Global Volcanism Program lists more than 1,500 active volcanoes worldwide. Active means an eruption within the past 10,000 years. But thousands more are classified as dormant or extinct. Haile Gubi was among them until November 23, 2025. How many others are we misjudging? How many sleeping giants are not sleeping at all, but simply waiting? The eruption of Haile Gubi is now part of the geological record. It will be studied for years, papers will be published, models will be revised, but the fundamental uncertainty remains. We do not know when the next eruption will occur. We do not know where, and we do not know if we will see it coming. In the Afar Rift, three tectonic plates are pulling a continent apart. Magma rises from the mantle, volcanoes awaken from silence, and the Earth reveals once again that it answers to no one. The desert is still. The ash has settled. But beneath Haile Gubi, the fire still burns. What other secrets is the Afar hiding? And when will the earth speak again?